Welcome to the Mayo Clinic Orthopedic Surgery Podcast, a curated series of interviews and discussions highlighting the three shields of orthopedic surgery at Mayo Clinic, clinical practice, research, and education. Welcome to the Mayo Clinic Ortho Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Colecio Corja, and we have the pleasure of having my esteemed colleague, Dr. Joaquin Sanchez Sotelo, here with us today. Joaquin obtained his medical degree, PhD, and orthopedic residency training at the Autonomous University of Madrid. He then completed two adult reconstruction fellowships here at the Mayo Clinic. Joaquin has an extensive research background and is well known for his work both here and internationally. He currently serves as the chair of our shoulder and elbow department here at the Mayo Clinic. We are lucky to have Dr. Sanchez Sotelo here with us to speak today. Welcome, Joaquin. Thank you very much, Kelechi. Thank you for the opportunity. So I thought today we would talk about new technology in shoulder arthroplasty, anywhere from 3D printing, preoperative planning, patient-specific uh, implants, and navigation, as well as mixed reality and robotics. So to start off, how has 3D mapping or printing been incorporated into the realm of shoulder arthroplasty? Well, that is such a great question, and it's interesting. When I was in training as a resident, then a fellow and early in my practice, and we attempted to do a shoulder arthroplasty, all we used, to be honest, was x-rays at the beginning. Then we incorporated a CT scan, and that was an eye-opener because I don't think we fully understood the deformity of the shoulder, especially for each patient and features of bone loss and subluxation. So today, as you very well know, we get the DICOM files of the CT scan of any patient that we're gonna be operated on. And we incorporate those into a software. And there are many companies that provide software that is basically free of use. And then the software allows us to create a 3D rendering of the shoulder on a screen where you can rotate the models and you can uh, get different measurements of version, inclination, subluxation, bone loss. And then on top of that, you can actually do your surgery virtually, place the implants wherever you want, wherever you think the patient will benefit the most. So it really has transformed shoulder arthroplasty into much more accurate surgery and also more personalized. So now we know where is it that we have to place our implants for each patient, specifically based on their anatomy and deformity. That's great, Joaquin. And, and so that kind of goes into our next question. What is PSI or patient-specific implants and, and how do they improve our accuracy and our outcomes when we're doing these surgeries? Yeah, so most shoulder surgeons use that acronym PSI for patient-specific instrumentation. And in the very basic form, what that means is that once you have your plan with your software that we described answering the previous question, you can actually order a guide that is 3D printed, and most of the times it is used for what we call the axis of rimming. So most systems, when you're preparing the glenoid, will base your preparation on a pin guide that is inserted, and patient specific instrumentation allows you to place the pin exactly where you planned uh, your surgery. Okay. And is that also effective in, in kind of getting your glenoid in the right position? Because we know that's the most important part of the surgery. That's exactly right. So it will tell you what's going to be the direction of your instruments that will basically end up preparing the glenoid so that you can match your version, inclination, and depth of rimming to what you planned in surgery. That's great. That sounds like it's really helpful. And then how is navigation used in shoulder arthroplasty? So navigation, to be honest, uh, is still in its infancy. As many people that may be listening know, navigation essentially means that you get some instruments that are called trackers and you place some in the anatomy. So you're tracking the patient's anatomy, the bones, essentially. You place some trackers in instruments, and then the computer through cameras will recognize the relationship between the anatomy and the instruments. And then real time, as you modify your instrument, you're gonna see how the instrument rendering changes in the screen and allows you to target whatever angle you want or whatever depth you want. As of now, there is only one company that is truly established in navigation and it's only for the glenoid. So mm -hmm. it's still starting and, uh, and going well, but I think we're gonna witness this coming decade an explosion of navigation systems that are based on different things, visual trackers, mixed reality, eventually robotics. Okay. And so is that navigation that's in its infancy in the shoulder, something that we've seen in the hip with total hips and total knees and robotics, is that kind of what we're seeing kind of develop in the shoulder? 
Yeah, I think what we have seen in the lower extremities that navigation was a first way to try to optimize the execution of the surgical plan. But if you go to meetings now or pay attention to what people are publishing, we have gone one step further into robotics. Now, there is a little bit of controversy there because some of the systems that people claim to be robotics are actually more sophisticated navigation without much robotics, you know, but in general, for hip and knee, now we're at a phase where robotics is being used or at least promoted widely, whereas in the shoulder, we're still at the navigation phase and again in its infancy. Yeah. Do you see that as something in the future where we're using the similar robotics and the knee to kind of um, get our, our glenoid and shave off the bone on the glenoid as well? No question. So I think robotics, um, at least in my practice, I hope it will be truly revolutionary because Robotics is basically a way to prepare the bones exactly to what you desire based on your plan. So the execution is perfect, but it has a number of features that are very appealing to me. One of them is that robotics is very accurate within maybe less than a degree and maybe less than 0.1 millimeters. Number two, it has this so-called haptic feedback that now we're used to it. For example, when you use an iPhone and you push on the screen for a long time, it vibrates. So it gives you feedback that is tactile. Right. With a robot, it's the same thing. You're preparing bone, and if you're going to go past what people call the boundaries, which is where is it that you don't want to go past because you will violate soft tissue, it will actually stop you. But the final thing is that you can prepare the bones with a very small instrument, maybe a burr. So as you know, one of the limiting factors of arthroplasty today is that oftentimes you have to divide and then repair the suprascapillaries muscle tendon unit. That needs protection, so patients are in a sling for four to six weeks. If we were able to prepare the bones of the shoulder through the interval region with a burr, potentially you could do the whole operation through the interval region, which means that you would be really soft tissue preserving and patients could throw the sling basically the day after surgery if they felt that the pain is well controlled. That's fantastic. That sounds like some exciting uh, things coming in the near future. And so that's a little bit about robotics. What about mixed reality? I know you've been really instrumental in developing that. Uh, can you tell us about mixed reality and how you use it in your practice? Yeah, of course. So robotics are coming, but there is still a few years away, I think. So mixed reality is one way you can navigate the shoulder. And uh, the way that uh, reality um, or mixed reality works um, is essentially by using uh, a visor or a headset that will project into your eyes a combination of the real world and the virtual world. And the system that I have helped design uh, through Mayo Clinic um, and uh, a company uh, involves loading the pre-op planning in the visor so that you can see real time in front of a patient what you're going to be doing in terms of your planning. But the next step will be to have markers like we use for classic navigation that can be recognized by this so-called HoloLens. So then you can navigate through the visor. And the hope is that one day you can do what we call markers-less navigation, where you can look at the field, the HoloLens will recognize the changing shapes of the bones, and without register, you can already start navigating. So I'm very excited about that technology. That eventually will be surpassed by robotics, or maybe uh, it'll be used in different environments uh, together. That's fantastic, Joaquin. And so you've used that in your shoulder arthroplasties. How often are you looking at that mixed reality through the goggles and changing your plan or tweaking a little bit based on what you see through those visors? Yeah, so um, I don't find myself changing the plan so much. It's more that I can execute better the plan that I made. So mixed reality, as of now, uh, I wouldn't think that you would use it to change your plan. It's more to look at the patient's anatomy without having to go back to a different screen. You see the plan projected, and then you can basically copy in real time from the screen to what you're seeing in the patient. And then, as I said, in the near future, that will allow navigation as well. Okay, that's great. And so a lot of people are talking about, you know, 3D printing, 3D printing from instruments to implants to houses. Um, how does 3D printing kind of fit in the shoulder or the plastic realm? Is there any times where we 3D print implants for the shoulder? Uh, so that is coming as well. And I think very, very quickly. Um, so right now, the interest is mostly in revision surgery. So for those patients that there is so much bone missing, especially on the glenoid that you and I know as surgeons that we couldn't really reconstruct the shoulder otherwise, you can order a custom-made 3D printed implant for revision. 
but very quickly we're going to see that in the setting of primary surgery as well. So I've heard that a couple of companies are working on 3D um, printed implants that are patient matched for the deformity. So you don't even have to ring the glenoid. You can just clean a little bit any remaining cartilage or maybe bone irregularities and just it will just fit that patient perfectly. And then one thing that Mayo has been a pioneer is in point, on care, point of care 3D printing, where we have a 3D printing lab in our facility, as you know. The question there would be more regulatory. Does a hospital have enough uh, documentation so that the FDA would allow printing implants in-house? I think that would be more for compassionate use, but there's no question that, like with navigation, robotics, and mixed reality, in the next decade, we're going to see more and more implants that are printed for the patient. That's awesome. And so that's something you see coming in the near future here? Yes. Well, I'm already using 3D printing implants for revision surgery. Pretty soon we'll be using them for some more complex primary surgery and maybe in the future for everyone. Awesome. So that, that's a lot of technology uh, development going on in the shoulder orthoplasty realm. Is there maybe. anything that we haven't touched on that you're kind of getting into? No, I just think that it's very exciting to think that things that we apply today in our daily life, like I'm always amazed about how much we have evolved with different computers, cell phones, watches, you know, things that we can do to improve our quality of life in general. I think medicine has lagged behind a little bit and part of the field because we have to make sure it is safe for our patients. But now it's really exciting because we're going to see an explosion of technology that I think is going to truly improve patient outcomes, which is what you and I really like. Yeah. How often are patients coming to you asking you, or, or can you do you do this robotic surgery, or do you do 3D implants or 3D specific uh, instruments? Are, are patients coming to you asking well, about that? I get the question about robotics all the time. And part of it is because, as you know, our knee replacement partners at Mayo use robotic surgery, right. and we share patients, right? So right. they come to me and say, hey, Dr. So and so did my knee with a robot. Can you do it with a shoulder? <laughs> and I have to tell them, unfortunately, not yet, but it's coming. But I'm working on it. <laughs> but I, I have all the things I can use. So then I show them the pure planning software, PSI, mixed reality, and then the robot is almost here. We're getting there. Yeah, yeah, that's really awesome stuff, Joaquin. Well, Thank I appreciate you taking your time to uh, talk to us today. I'm just going to summarize uh, what you said here. So you talked a little bit about 3D mapping. You talked about how it allows us to better get a detail and accuracy in shoulder arthroplasty. You talked about uh, patient-specific instruments, which allow smaller instruments to be used. You talked a little bit about navigation. You said it's in this infancy, but allows real-time tracking, but it's mostly used for the glenoid. You also talked about robotics and how it's a structured way to prepare the bone accurately for replacements. Then we got into a little bit about mixed reality, and it's a way to navigate the shoulder using a visor that combines the real world and the preoperative plane in a way you can see it live on the patient. And then we talked about 3D printed implants. You're saying these are more, more used in revision shoulder arthroplasty for patient specific implants. Anything else, Joaquin? No, that's an excellent summary. Thank you for listening so carefully. You're awesome. Well, uh, thanks for stopping with us, Joaquin. It's a pleasure to have you today. My pleasure. Thank you very much.